What would Jesus do? Well, apparently kicking over tables is at least one option. Subscribe and click that bell for all the things that are Bible. Did I say that right? Hello and welcome to Bible Central. Today there's a flannel graph behind me. That's for all you kids who grew up in Sunday school watching Veggie Tales because you have forgotten your first love. That's right, once upon a time we learned about Bible stories from a little felt cutout stuck to a board. It was super dumb and we loved it. On today's video, we're talking about whether or not Jesus did something that was wrong. Or rather, I am talking with myself. And you are listening to our conversation. Eavesdropper. I haven't dropped no eaves, sir, honest. The event in question is the cleansing of the temple, the famous moment where Jesus commits acts of assault and vandalism. Isn't that wrong? Now before you go ahead and click away, the Bible clearly states, multiple times in fact, that Jesus was perfect and without sin. So why are we still talking? The Bible said it. That settles it. Well, that works fine for me, but you've got to admit that sometimes you read the Gospels and you have a hard time understanding why Jesus did something. Sure, there are plenty of miracles, powerful sermons, and iconic acts of compassion, but there are also very hard sayings and even harder actions. I believe the Bible is 100% true 100% of the time. But that doesn't 100% mean that I can 100% understand 100% of it 100% of the time. 100%. And for those who already don't believe the Bible, some of these events from Jesus' life are even harder to take in. Sometimes they're even used as a club against Christians to make us question our faith. So you believe in a God of love? Then why did his son hit all them poor people who just wanted to sacrifice their lambs? The argument is contingent on how much they sound like Mr. Nezer. But it does raise valid questions. Was Jesus angry? Isn't being angry a sin? Was he wrong to break people's stuff and scatter their animals? What does the fox say? These are the questions. So let's dive right into the passages at hand. That's right, passages. The story of Jesus driving people out of the temple appears in all four Gospels. As you read each writer's account, you get a clearer picture of what actually took place. The shortest accounts come from Matthew and Luke. And Jesus went into the temple of God, and cast out all them that sold and bought in the temple, and overthrew the tables of the money changers, and the seats of them that sold doves, saying unto them, It is written, My house is the house of prayer but ye have made it a den of thieves. Seems pretty straightforward. Jesus walks into the temple, sees people selling animals and changing money, gets really upset and goes all beast mode! Oh wait just a minute. Why were these people in the temple to begin with? Many Jews had to travel great distances to Jerusalem to worship. Some simply couldn't bring their animals with them, and if they did, there was a chance that the animal could become injured along the way, making it unfit for sacrifice. Because of this, there was a service provided at the temple where you could purchase an animal that had already been pre-inspected by the priests and found to be clean. As for the money changers, the temple only accepted tithes in what was called the Tyrian shekel, so those with Roman or Greek currency would have to have their money converted. But all this was business as usual. So what was the cause for this temple tantrum? One theory says that the money changers specifically were cheating people by giving them far less than their money was actually worth. I'll give you 300 bucks for it. Mm. According to this theory, when Jesus flipped over the tables of the money changers, he was exposing the fake weights in their scales they used to conduct their fraud. This is in line with what Jesus says in Matthew 21, 13. And said unto them, It is written, My house shall be called the house of prayer but ye have made it a den of thieves. But in John 2.16, Jesus says they've made his father's house a house of merchandise. So what exactly was the problem? You see, both the changing of money and the selling of pre-inspected animals were premium services, and as such, came at a premium price. This was big business. According to history, there were suppliers who existed in Jerusalem just for this purpose, raising thousands upon thousands of doves simply to be sacrificed at the temple. And as the population increased, so too did the demand. It was even written in the Mishnah, an ancient source of Jewish laws and histories, that one time in Jerusalem, the price of two pigeons or doves was a gold dinar. 
Dinar. Dinar or Dinar. Who cares? That's the rough equivalent today of paying 4,500 bucks. The pigeons. Between the years 52 and 70 AD, the leader of the Sanhedrin, Rabin Simeon ben Gamaliel, or also pronounced Gamaliel, or GMMA to the LIL, because who's going to stop you, was the son of Gamaliel the Elder, the mentor to the Apostle Paul. And like Jesus, he wasn't a fan of what was going on in the temple, and he took it upon himself to fix it. He taught all day long in the temple about how wrong this inflation was. He also greatly limited what would require and would not require a sacrifice, leaving a surplus of doves in Jerusalem. By the end of that day, the price of a pair of doves or pigeons was half of a silver dinar, the rough equivalent today of about $90. So basically, he caused the stock market to crash. His message may very well have been influenced by the actions of Jesus some 15 to 20 years before. Simeon's father, after all, had a very balanced view of early Christianity as the book of Acts tells us. And now I say unto you, refrain from these men and let them alone. For if this counsel or this work be of men, it will come to naught. But if it be of God, ye cannot overthrow it, lest haply ye be found even to fight against God. And there's another action that Jesus takes here that, surprisingly, some of the Pharisees there would have found quite agreeable. And would not suffer that any man should carry any vessel through the temple. You see, the temple complex was huge. If you had business on the other side of town, rather than go all the way around, a lot of people would simply cut across in the lower courts. This was permitted, though not exactly smiled on. It's also written in the Mishnah to not use the temple as a shortcut. The idea being, Come to worship. Don't use the complex for your own personal convenience. But unfortunately, that was exactly what was happening. The temple, the dwelling place of God, now filled with the sounds of animals, the jingling of coins, and hundreds of people, most of which weren't even there for the right reasons. Keep in mind that in many ways, this mountain was a symbol of God's grace to his people. It was here that God provided a substitute when Abraham was to sacrifice Isaac. Here, God changed his mind about destroying Jerusalem because of David's sin. And here, Ezra and the people rebuilt the temple of God after exile in Babylon. God had given his people many second chances on this ground. And this was their gratitude? Yeah, Jesus was upset, and understandably so. But was his cleansing of the temple really an act of blind rage? Was he so overcome with emotion that he took it out on a bunch of innocent people and animals? Isn't that wrong? Well, find out next time on Bible Central. What? This video was running a little too long. And it's dinner time. While you wait, how about you watch some of the other videos here on this channel? And subscribe and click that bell. And yeah, don't trust what I say. Trust what he said. <laughs>